Welcome back to the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast, you guys. I'm Danita, your host, and today I'm bringing a special guest that's going to be teaching us about stop shrinking yourself, and instead, we're going to show you how to expand to really step into your full empowerment. I'm bringing in Amanda. She goes by Mandy as well. You're going to see her in our Facebook group. What a phenomenal transformation that she had, not only in her body, but her mind and her life. Amanda Wessel is a mom and a high school teacher in the Philly suburbs. She's also an MC and stage manager for local music venues and blogger of the City Pulse. It doesn't stop there. This girl does so much. She has a passion for perfumes and shares this on her YouTube channel called Limelight Lass. She also is a co-host for a live stream on Fridays called Mr. Smelly 1977. And all those links are down below. You can guys go ahead and check her out. Um, She is absolutely thrilled with the success she's found in the accountability program. But let's dive into how she really was able to capture the stop shrinking yourself as women we commonly do. So let's get into it. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. All right. I can already tell you guys this is going to be such a phenomenal podcast today. Um, I went over some just kind of notes with Mandy here. And what really stand, stood out to me the most is when you hear as women are stuck shrinking themselves emotionally, physically, and I think all the aspects. And, and, and I love how you really said the, that level up this high maintenance, all sort of really fun things came about it. So the questions Mm -hmm. I have for you, as far as not shrinking yourself, what are ways that, what are things that come up for you that there was a version of yourself that was shrinking and the version of you now that's empowered? Yes. Well, thank you for, for asking. And I'm so happy to be here, by the way. So I think when, you know, when you get to a point where you're very frustrated with your body, as I was, you know, getting older, especially over 40, I was not happy with where my body was at. I was noticing all these changes and yeah, you try to restrict yourself. You compare yourself to other people and look at this culture that we live in, this Instagram culture, social media culture, where you're looking at girls who are in their 20s, you know, and saying, you know, why can't my body look like that? And just chasing that ideal and sometimes in unhealthy ways, you know, calorie restricting and just hyper criticizing um, your body instead of celebrating it. And I think you know, that that's one of the ways that I was really trying to shrink myself. And from the emotional standpoint, also not allowing myself to be who I was or letting people around me who weren't, you know, as the kids say, like vibing with me, right? Like people who weren't vibing with me, trying to win those people over instead of saying, you know, you know what, this is who I am. And if you're not into that, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I don't really need you in my life. And I think that has been a really big shift for me as I've been in the program. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Now, a a little bit of a shocker kind of came through the program for you that you weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. And obviously I was not expecting either. Uh, Do you mind Mm -hmm. sharing with us a little bit of that shock that came through self-healing and kind of working through this program? Yeah. So about a month into the program, when I was starting to already see results, already improving myself. Um, My relationship of three and a half years, I felt like kind of abruptly ended. And I was really, I knew there were some issues, but I was completely blindsided by the way it was handled. (laughs) Just, it was, it was a little bit of a shock. And if I didn't have the program and you to lean on, I don't know if I would have gotten through it so well, like that emotional component to me was so surprising that, you know, it all goes together. It's such a, you know, the nutrition and the fitness and the emotional component. And I know some people might think like, what does all this touchy feely, like psychological, emotional stuff have to do with losing fat and all that It has everything to do with it. Everything. Because you know, as we're learning through the program, your body is absorbing all of your thoughts, all of your feelings, like your body knows, and it's, and it's going to get stuck if you're stuck in those other ways, right? So yeah, I was, I 
did not think I would have such a hard time with this breakup because I'd actually contemplated it, a, you know, a few times over the course of the relationship because in my head, I knew that it really wasn't going to work out. But I was very surprised by how shook I was over it. And so, you know, one of the biggest things that you taught me was to sit in those, I call them yucky feelings, right? I hate feeling depressed, emotional, resentful, you know, and then I'm looking back like, okay, what went wrong and overanalyzing everything and just getting so wrapped up in my thoughts and emotions. And you just really encouraged me and thank you for helping me through that. Cause I was literally like crying on the phone to you. <laughs> no one in my, you know, like no one was really there for me as much as you were. So that was much appreciated, but just allowing yourself to feel those feelings. Because if you just, I think we're taught as women to, especially in this culture, just shove everything down. Oh, you know, forget him, just move on, go out, have fun. Don't even address those deep, you know, issues. And we really like sat in them and we worked through them. Yeah, my diet and exercise those couple of weeks were not great, but I got through it. I pushed through it with your help. Um, and, you know, doing some breathing and meditation, things like that also really helped. Um, but just, yeah, allowing those feelings to come through and, and unblock everything else. And then everything else kind of progressed from there. So yeah, it was a, it was a really tough time. You know, I, I mean, I still look at the situation thinking like, what the F was that? <laughs> like, what was that? But <clears throat> I'm in I such a like, like clear place now. Yeah, I feel like that's how life is. Sometimes it really just kind of hits you in a blindsided manner that you're you're like, wait, 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 would not expected, you know, on this path, you're imagining how the future is going and you're just not expecting those things. And so really interesting, as you said, like those yucky feelings and we've all been there. We all know what those feelings feel like. You know, you, you, as you talk, it brings me back to those moments in my life or, you know, people that are listening currently for them as they're going through those feelings and a part of them wants to stuff it down. They want to avoid it just to please those people that are around them. So they don't have to like hear about it or go through it with them. And so then it just becomes this unresolved thing, which we, we now know there's actually scientific proof that shows that those unresolved emotions will actually get stored inside the body, which creates a lot of either illness, diseases, or even cancer. So pretty yes. shocking how that actually goes through. So really cool that we can have that space with each other. And I think, you know, if, if, if those that are listening right now, you're going through that, allow that to be a message to just go towards those feelings, whether it's the fear, mm -hmm. whether it's the sadness, whether it's the anger and learn that those actually, if we can embrace those, they can turn out to be really cool messages. So thank you for bringing those up. Um, so going back to the like stuck shrinking yourself, you mentioned earlier about this like high maintenance and I love your spinoff on it. So tell me a little bit what that high maintenance means to you. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I think we initially started talking about high maintenance in regards to food and re regards to choices that we make. And, you know, one thing that you really taught me through the program is, you know, you do not have to give up the things that you love in this program, which is great because I'm a foodie, I'm a whiny, whatever you want, <laughs> wino, love my wine. I love certain things. I love, look, I'm from Philly. I love my Buffalo wings and things like that. I can't imagine a life without those things ever again. That is just not sustainable. So one of the aspects of being high maintenance is, okay, choose your top three things, you know, or whatever number we're talking about. And you can allow yourself to have them, but let's face it, like we go to events all the time where food is shoved in front of our face and we feel obligated to eat it. And it's not even something that we like that much, which is ridiculous because we're trying to be polite. We don't want to insult anyone. Look, I'm Italian, so I know how hard it is because with, you know, food is love. And if you reject someone's food as an Italian, that's like sometimes a big no, no, right? But making good choices, or maybe you have a little bite here and there, but just getting back and like recentering yourself and thinking, okay, is it really worth it to derail all of my progress by eating, 
you know, two big hunks of cake that I don't even like, you know, <laughs> that's the thing is being high maintenance in that way. And as far as being high maintenance in other ways, not surrounding yourself with people who are really adding no value to you. And again, we're in this society that's like, everyone tries to be so polite and not hurt people's feelings. But at the same time, like if, if there are people around you draining your energy, sucking your energy, bringing you down, not helping you meet your goals or level up or achieve what you want to achieve, they, you don't need to spend time with those people. You have to be, look, time is the most valuable resource that we have in the world. It's more valuable than money. So are you going to spend your time with people who are not adding any value to you? Or are you going to spend time with like-minded people who are lifting you up and helping you achieve your goals? It's kind of like a no-brainer, right? So I think that carries through with the with the food and with the with the exercise and also with people. And you know, you will find another thing we talked about is you will find that as you level yourself up and are more high maintenance. Some people are just going to drop away, and that's not a bad thing. You might lose some people, and because some people don't want to meet you up here, they want to be stuck in their own little thing, mm -hmm. and let them let them do that. And I think that's one of the biggest like aha breakthroughs that I've had in my journey so far with you. Wow, that's really profound. A lot of people are really terrified. The fear really comes up when they think of change because there's a lot of unknowns. And so how are you able to go through those unknowns and feel safe and secure of that leveling up and growth, knowing that it's it's going to be a different journey? There's going to be differences that are going to occur. How, how did you get through those fears? Well, first of all, I really embrace that that saying that you told me of like, I'm right where I need to be right now. Like I am just surrendering now and, and trusting that everything that's meant to, for me and everyone who's meant for me is going to come along naturally if I keep myself up here. But I'm right where I need to be. I don't have to be stressing. You know, this is, there's a lot of talk these days about like masculine versus feminine energy, right? And I'm one of those people who have been stuck in masculine energy so much and overthinking everything and trying to make things happen and trying to win people over and convince people to do things and expect an outcome. You can't hang on to an outcome. You have to kind of take things as they come and just have that confidence of, I'm good. I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm doing exactly what I need to do right now. And I'm right where I need to be. So embracing that mindset has also been life-changing mm. for me. Yeah. The, the word control came up right there as far as the control of the future, right? The control of the, mm -hmm. the unknowns. And so that was a part of you of releasing that control. And instead of obsessing over those things. It was really a release. And so really profound. That's really cool. Again, it's one of those things that we don't hear much talked about. It's not something that's a very common language that goes on. It has to go to kind of a deeper level for somebody to understand where control comes from. But this is pretty interesting that I've always found that the ones that have this obsession of control is because at some point in their life, they actually had control taken away. And so that's kind of the opposite mm -hmm. of how things I've really seen of why we kind of have those almost protection mechanisms in a way. And so really, really interesting how you've been able to level up and, and have that self-growth. Um, I want to go to the next part here. You mentioned a little bit about this self-love and I wanted to hear, we, oh man, that's such a topic too, of, of that's such an overused word, but I want to hear what that means to you and what that shift has been. Yeah, self-love and self-care is not about just bubble baths and a spa day, <laughs> things like that. Mm -hmm. It's really looking inward and being honest with yourself about the positive aspects, but also the negative aspects and things that you need to work on and, but still embracing them. And, you know, we did a lot of work with that when we were talking about our loops and, and things like that in some of our sessions that were more centered on self-love self and the more emotional components. And 
yeah, knowing that like we we all have broken parts of there's not one person on this planet that does not have something broken about them somewhere. So you have to love your whole self, even with the flaws. You know, and as much as it hurts sometimes to to take a deep look at those, but yeah, you just have to be honest and embrace it, embrace your whole person. Because if you can't, it's again, such a cliche, right? But it's so true. If you can't love yourself, how is anyone else going to, you know, or how are you going to attract the right people into your life unless you are doing that work on yourself? It's so true. That's where the boundaries come in. Really. I, I went through that. I relate a lot to what you just said there, as far as that shift of, if you don't love yourself, you're setting those boundaries of what the expectation is. And so if you're treating yourself bad, then you're allowing that others come in and treat yourself bad. And so I I relate a lot to that as far as the relationships, the people we attract, or just putting everybody else in front of you, besides really focusing on your own needs. That's really good. I'm glad that you mentioned us, oh, not just a bunch of bubble baths. It's really going towards yourself and looking at those things that maybe we've been in a weird way, kind of denying right. some aspects of ourself. Pretty cool. So uh, let's turn around to some great news is you've been able to start dating now. And that is a, a shift within itself. A lot of women are listening and they are just terrified to put themselves out again and to make that step of kind of an expansive type of energy, right? Is where you're in your love vibration versus the fear is the opposite. You're in contracting. And so they're doing a lot of self-isolating. So what was that shift for you to kind of put yourself back out there to find a new world? Well, (laughs) it's definitely different. The landscape is different. I will say, because I had not really been single saying, you know, out there for any length of time since uh, before my marriage, because I also had gotten divorced and things are different. There's dating apps and, you know, everything's like online. And, and so that was a little bit of an adjustment, but the most important thing that you taught me is to date for a feeling, not how you feel about the person, but how you feel around the person with the person. How does this person make me feel? And, you know, you had that, that great little analogy of, okay, you know, on your best day where you're going out and you're all dressed up and you're at an event, that's all about you, the guy standing next to you, how do you want to feel with him? And I said, like, I want to feel supported. Right. And, you know, if you're in bed at night and you have a face mask on and you're in your sweats and your guys there, how do you want to feel? And I said, you know what, that's, I still, I want to feel supported. Like I want to feel supported. And because I did not feel supported in my last few relationships. And it's so funny because on my first date with, with someone I'm dating, I asked that person, this is the weirdest thing too. So if you're, if anyone has any doubts, like what this program can do. So after Danita and I had that conversation, like maybe, you know, a couple weeks later, I went on this date and I asked him, so, you know, what's your vibe in a relationship? What do you bring to the table? How are you in a relationship? And he's like, oh, I would say supportive. I was like, that's weird. (laughs) That's so weird. You're like, have you been listening to my phone calls? What's going on? It really (laughs) was like that. But yeah, I think just holding on to that idea, because look, it's stressful because there's rejection. People have a million options now. They can just swipe, 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 swipe. But holding on to that high maintenance mentality, but also holding on to you know, the feelings, how does this person make, not, are they cute? Are they tall? You know, come on. (laughs) Are they, what kind of job do they, obviously, you know, you want someone who has his life together, but I'm not looking at people based on those things anymore. And once you make that shift, you learn real quickly, you learn really quickly when someone is really going to be on that wavelength with you or not, because you get put, you know, you'll find out ladies, if you go on these, you'll get, you'll get guys messaging you right off the bat. Oh, you're hot. Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? No, thank you block. Whereas like the old me would have been like, Oh, he thinks I'm pretty. Oh, (laughs) you know, that shift is like, I'm not playing around anymore. You know, I'm looking for my person who makes me feel that way, who makes me feel supported. And you got to hold on to that. And you have to hold on to that mindset of if this doesn't work out, it's not the end of the world. 
the world is not going to come crashing down. This is just, this person is getting like pushed out of my way to find the actual person. You have to make that shift. You cannot keep engaging with someone who's never going to give you what you need or give you that feeling. You have to just push them aside so that you can really be clear and intentional and focus on that person who is going to support you through your fitness journey, your wellness journey, you know, all of the journeys that you have in life. And it's not worth compromising on that. I'm sorry. You know, it's, you're worth so much more than settling, which is what I did before. Mm. Unfortunately for decades. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Believe it or not, there's been a lot of women that have gone through the program and they have been in the infidelity part of the relationship for years and they haven't set the boundaries and they continue to keep going into just the forgiveness and the cycling of, again, the cheating, the infidelity over and over, which makes their self-worth plummet. Their confidence is just zero. And they just feel like, you know, there's just, they're so in fear of trying to like move and grow themselves. And so why do you think this program has allowed women not only to start reaching their fitness goals, but also gives them a sense of strength to almost create it if it's a divorce or a boundary in some sort of way. Why do you think it does that? I think because of the focus on the, the self-love part of it, really, and just setting those high standards for yourself and keeping the focus on improving every aspect of your life, not just like once you start saying I'm worth investing in for my health and my fitness and my, let's face it, for me, it was at first mostly appearance. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie. I want to look a certain way for, but for me, you, you start to think like, I'm doing these things for me, not to look good in a bikini. So this guy that I like is going to like me back or like my Instagram posts. It's for me. And once you set those boundaries and those expectations for yourself, you just start to see, it just becomes really clear who in your life is aligning with that and, and who is not. And protecting your peace too. You know, there's an element of it of, yeah, just self, self-growth, self-awareness and having, having standards for yourself in, in every area. So I think that's why it happens. And when people don't meet you at that level, it, it really, it starts to become clear. And again, it might seem really crappy at the time, but it is for the best. It really is. Yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing. Let's get superficial for a second. So you actually technically yeah. have lost five inches so far. I mean, that was last week. So we have no idea what this right. week is. Yes. You've which... already lost five inches, just your waist alone. That's not even counting yes. the arms, the legs, the hips, right. the glutes, right. like right. all that adjustment too. Right. So tell us what that has been for you of maybe a difference of weight loss programs. Maybe you've tried in the past compared to this one. What, what's that been like? Well, as I said, you know, the food aspect of it and never feeling like I had clicked with any other like food program, this has totally shifted that. So that has been a huge win. Um, but also, you know, as someone who's over 40, the muscle loss, the muscle, um, lean muscle mass loss really was in the forefront of my mind and, and, and thinking like, okay, Hey, I really need to be proactive with this. So shifting to, again, the whole shift from weight loss to fat loss. And I know you talk about it so much. It's a completely different thing, not paying attention to the scale because, you know, other programs just focus on losing those numbers on a scale. That is not ladies. That's not where it's at because you can be skinny fat. It, you can be unhealthy having the lean muscle and losing that, that is where it's at. And that's what makes this program so different than the other ones that I have tried because other ones are focusing on, oh, how many number, you know, how many pounds on the scale and paying no attention to, you know, do I look sleek and toned and, and all of that and sculpted, or do I just look 
malnourished, you know, <laughs> and which is which is not really a, the best look. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, so, uh, you, I want to hear what you'll never do again. So, I have, I'll give you a couple of examples. I have a a woman that she's she went through the program. I think she's close to 50, 60s. And she just dead serious was like, I will never diet again. So I want to hear what your nevers are of like something that you just really created that shift for you of your nevers. Yes. Never obsess over calories again. And, you know, tracking can be helpful for some things, but I was, it was taking over my life trying to count calories and, you know. Um, so that I will never deny myself of the foods that I really, really love and enjoy because that's not sustainable. And yeah, (laughs) life's too short. Life is too short not to, you know, go to the winery once in a while. Right. Which I like to do trying to force myself to do all this cardio. I freaking hate cardio. Okay. I don't enjoy running. I don't enjoy like aerobics and things like that. And I was trying to force myself and dreading it. And, you know, you learn through this program, little bursts of cardio are great, like in between sets of weights, but you don't have to spend an hour on a treadmill bored to tears to get really good results. So yeah, I'm never going to over cardio myself ever again, because it can also be counterproductive. You know, we're finding out with with cortisol levels and things like that. So yeah, and just, I'm never gonna judge myself so harshly again. That's probably the biggest one. And, you know, picking apart every little flaw about myself, it's, that's not helping anybody, you know? Um, And I, I find that a lot of times we are so hard on ourselves and the things that we notice and every little bit of cellulite and every little mark and every, you know, other, if we have the right mindset and are confident in ourselves, other people are not even going to notice those. That's the ridiculous part of it that I, I'm just, I've let go of that. You guys hear that? <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh. Snaps, snaps. What yeah. a sense of like total elated freedom. That's, oh, what a, what a beautiful space to get that. And the surety knowing that this is a sustainable direction, that you have so much control into your 50s, your 60s and on of just being able to know and have that power is really what I see in you. And it's it's bravery, it's freedom in its absolute finest self. There's also a sense of peace, you know, that I, I see the difference from our first call till now is very shocking to kind of just see almost like you've you've kind of sit into yourself more rather than this kind of like searching of this outside experience. It's this kind of like this kind of sit in in confidence within yourself. That's really beautiful to observe in our conversations and the way that you talk and things. But so my, uh, my last final question here is if there is a woman that's kind of like, I guess the older version of yourself, that is kind of that searching for the outside, just really kind of finding that stuck experience. Maybe it's that Mm -hmm. shrinking experience of herself. What is something that you could Really, if you kind of had that eye connection with a woman right now that's listening to this podcast, how would you vulnerably or genuinely open up and tell her like some truth right now? Well, I would say to, you know, focus on bettering yourself for yourself, not for anybody else. That's the most important thing. And that's wasting time and energy on methods that are not going to be successful for you. It's just, you're going to keep going through that cycle over and over and over again. That's why women get so discouraged is we are set up for failure by the weight loss industry. Get off of that. (laughs) You need to just abandon that and trust in this process. And believe me, like I was skeptical because I've tried so many things And within the first couple weeks, I was seeing a difference. But the most important thing I can really stress is you're not just going to see the physical changes. You are going to see the emotional changes and you're going to find so much growth. You know, you're going to lose inches, but you are going to grow in so many other areas, especially the part about loving yourself. So I would just say, don't be frustrated. Don't feel like 
you're at the end of your rope because I was at the end of my rope. I mean, frustrated, a mess, you know, because of my body and the changes that it was going through. And I felt so powerless about it. And this program really empowers you and you're going to love it. I mean, (laughs) there's not much more else to say besides like trust in this and you will be so glad that you did. Why did you choose us? What was the like tipping point for you to know that we were your people? Well, you know, I, I had seen all this research about weight training and that, you know, especially over 40, that it's something you need to do. And not going to lie, I first got roped in by the cute, the cuteness of your weights <laughs> because I'm like, oh, they're pink and purple and girly. And I love the way they look. And I would love to have a little home gym. And so I got all of the weights and then I had my first one-on-one call actually with Monica and she was amazing. And we talked about my goals and we talked about what works and what doesn't work. And she was just so supportive and wonderful. And it's been cool to see her journey as well, you know, because I follow her on social media. And then, um, you know, after meeting you, it was like, yeah, I know. But before I met you, I knew, okay, I think this is a direction I want to go in because this is like the one thing I have not tried. I really have not tried weight training and resistance training. So I thought like this, this is hopefully it, you know, and um, it's really proven itself. But the community also, you know, pretty early on, I, I got into the, the Facebook group and I saw how encouraging all of the women are in that group and really celebrate each other and lift each other up. And it's just, it is a good place to be. Yeah. That's cool. Thanks for sharing that. So let's give a shout out to you right now, as far as uh, your, I love that you do podcasts yourself. You also do blogs. So if somebody is very interested and they love connecting with you today, they felt some synergy, where are some areas that you are doing and you put out there that people could follow? Okay. So I'm actually a fragrance YouTuber. My uh, YouTube name is Limelight Last, and it's a female targeted fragrance channel. So if you love perfumes and you love perfume reviews and recommendations, you should definitely check that out. I also co-host a live stream with another much bigger YouTuber, Mr. Smelly1977. He's, he's British. He's a lot of fun. We do a live stream on Friday nights and it's, uh, we talk about fragrance, but a lot of other things as well. And dating, we have like a little dating segment that I've been doing and leveling up your life. We do that as well. And then I'm also a blogger for the City Pulse. And, you know, we'll put all the links in there for you to follow that. And I blog about lifestyle in the, in the Philly suburbs and events and things like that. So definitely reach out to me. I would love to uh, hear from you. And I'll make it really easy for you guys. All the links that she just said, she's putting down in the description for us below. So just go ahead and click on those links and connect and follow with Mandy. She's you feel it. She's a light. She's a powerhouse. You can tell she's going in some great directions in her life as far as this new level of growth and leveling up experience and no longer shrinking yourself. What a cool way to connect with empowering women. So I highly recommend connecting with Mandy. So thanks, Mandy, for being on the show tonight. Appreciate you yeah. and um, really excited to see your journey continuing to grow as uh, your before and afters are phenomenal. Super proud of you. And uh, you got to be proud of yourself as well for that for that immense growth. I am. Thank you so much, Danita. Yeah. Bye. been a while since you felt like this, 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 this. We've been a while since you felt like this, this. been a while since you felt like this, this, this. been a while since